Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do. I'm gonna be talking about makeup I used to hate, but now I love. I've been seeing this requested in my comments quite a bit recently because my makeup preferences have changed. They've changed a lot. Some could say they've changed drastically over the last a little while here. So I keep seeing this uh, requested to do. So I have some uh, specific makeup items that I'm gonna be talking about that I used to hate and that now I love, and then also kind of like trends or techniques or just makeup in general, so. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, welcome. So before we jump into it, I will show my Vegas OOTD. Uh, today we just have on one of my two pairs of shorts that I own. These are the black ones. I have black, I have denim. I need to invest in more shorts. Here's Aries. She does not have a Vegas OOTD today, but that's okay. She still wants to show you that she is here and that she is working hard. She shipped out orders this morning that came in for by Samantha March. So, you know, thank you for helping Aries earn her paycheck. And then I just have a bodysuit on. It's just this like leopard uh, bodysuit. But I did the reverse cat eye trend that is going around. I have gotten so many requests to do this. I did not film it, but I am planning to film it. I just wanted to try it first and see, and I'm slightly in a rush. We have a, um, we made a foodie group here at the complex that I live in, and we have our, our foodie date of July. There's like 20 of us going to the angry crab or something like that. So I was in a bit of a rush, haven't curled my hair. It's just blow dried, and I just wanted to see if I could do it, so. This is what I got. I even put on lashes, which I don't normally do, but I felt like I needed to like slightly dress it up a little bit. So that is what I'm wearing today. I'll link all of my makeup down below, but yeah, I am planning to film how I did if you'd want to see it. It'd probably go up on my Instagram, which is March Beauty Word, but uh, I found so many requests to try that too. Okay, so to jump into it and the specific products, I actually went back and I, I looked at my videos because I was like, have I done this video before? And I have, it was about four years ago. And because the, one of the first products that popped into my head was this foundation from Estee Lauder and this is the Double Wear. And I was like, I could have swore I've mentioned in a video, but I couldn't find a specific one. So I'm just gonna mention it anyways. The Estee Lauder uh, Double Wear Stay In Place Makeup. This was all the rage on YouTube for such a long time. When I was first getting on YouTube and really you know, getting more into makeup and buying the makeup that I was seeing people recommend, it was always Estee Lauder Double Wear. And when I first bought it and tried it, I really, really hated it. And I think it was probably, my makeup preferences were different, but I think I also just, I wasn't quite well versed enough in foundation. I did not wear foundation until well into my 20s. Um, I, I really wouldn't even wear foundation, like in college and in high school, like every once in a while, I would try to like experiment with like something from Maybelline, but a lot of times, I wouldn't wear foundation. I just, I had really nice skin for a very long time, which is excellent for me. Especially with out of something like a liquid foundation and not just like a tinted moisturizer or something really light coverage. I just think I didn't really know for sure what it was I was doing. So when I first tried this, I did not like it at all. I ended up trying it again, you know, a couple years later and I was a little bit more confident in my makeup skills. I had been wearing foundation for a couple years at that point. I felt like I knew how to apply it and then I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, so this is one that just, when I was thinking about this video, this kind of stuck out in my mind right away. I wear this all the time. I wear it a lot here in Vegas. I feel like it holds up really well, it, even in the heat. I feel like it's very, very long wearing. Uh, it's more of a natural finish foundation, which I still do prefer. That's been kind of my preference for, for quite some time now. Um, but I, yeah, I just, I love the natural finish. I love that it's long wearing. I reach for it a lot here. Only thing that I don't love is that it doesn't have a pump. So I just have to like pour it out, which is not always the best. The shade that I wear is 3N1, which is a pretty good shade matchup for me right now, but definitely had to include that one. <laughs> Another product that I thought of right away was the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. I just did not get on with these. When ColourPop first came onto the scene, I was very, very interested in the brand. I was very new to YouTube at the time. Once again, I don't even know if I had a beauty channel yet at that point. I might've still only had my book channel, but I was very intrigued by them. I was buying a lot from them, and then I started to hear more and more about them from YouTube, and everybody would rave about the Super Shocks. Like, do you remember the days where people would have their, what am I trying to say? Where people would have their organizer in the back, and it would be full. Like, each little individual thing would have another ColourPop Super Shock in there, and 
people were just raving about them and they were affordable and it was like a unique thing and they were you know kind of a different formula and i bought so many of them like i would watch people's recommendations videos and i would write down the shades and then i would buy them and then i'd be like why did I do that? I just did not get on with them. But I will say within the past, I don't know, six, eight months or so, somewhere around there, I find myself reaching for them more and more. And I think this is one of those of where my makeup preferences just changed. I was into palettes for a very long time. And then when these were coming out, I was still very into my palettes and that's just what I prefer to reach into. If you watch my videos from three, four years ago, I would constantly say it and constantly say it. And I was someone who like, I just wanted to go into my one eyeshadow palette and that was it. So I just never really reached for them. But now just with how much <laughs> make, I'm gonna say makeup preferences so much, please do not make a drinking game unless you're drinking water, <laughs> but stay hydrated, okay? I just, I feel like with how much they have changed, a lot of times I'm reaching now more for my single shadows and I'm going for something just really fast and easy. Not not today, because this, this, this took me a hot second, but I'm looking for something that's a little bit more quick and easy. So I keep reaching for the ColourPop Super Shocks. And these are just two that I pulled out. I think these are both from the Raw Beauty Christie collection. Yes, because they have a little mushroom on them. But I, especially if it's something really sparkly, I don't know. I've, I've been really loving that. And I used to hate, this is another thing. I used to hate applying makeup with my fingers. I would do, you know, trying new makeup videos. And I would try something like an eyeshadow. And I would use my brush. And people would be like screaming in the comments. Like, use your fingers. It's better with your fingers. And I'm like, I don't want to, Susan. Don't make me use my fingers. And now I'm like, yeah, I use my fingers to apply makeup. It's fine. <laughs> so another product, this is one that, it wasn't that I necessarily hated it. It just, I didn't really find a use for it. I didn't really, I didn't really see what the point of this product was. <laughs> okay, so this is from Drunk Elephant. This is their Deep Bronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Serum. So this says to guard and glow like a shot of sunshine without the damaging effects. Uh, okay, so basically it's like, how do I, how do I explain this? Here's how I use it. I use it mixed in with a foundation. So here's, here's, here's what it looks like. And then when you blend it out, looks like so. You can use it with your foundation, your tinted moisturizer. You can mix it in with your moisturizer or other skincare. Um, you could use it on its own if you want to. But when I first got this from Drunk Elephant, I was just, I was like, I, 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 I'm not really one who would often mix foundations either. I don't know why. Like, I would watch other YouTubers and they'd be like, a pump of this, a pump of this, a pump of that. And then I mix it all together. And I'm like, that sounds like a lot of work. I, d I definitely don't want to do that. But I have been doing it more lately. I bought the Wishful uh, Skin Tint. And I don't love it on its own. But I love it mixed in with other foundations. Or a lot of times I'm going with the Deep Bronzy and I mix this in with my foundation. Especially if I have one that's a little bit too light for me. This just gives a nice glow. I have it mixed in with my foundation today. I'm wearing the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. It's just a touch too light for me. So I mix in the Deep Bronzy. It gives a glow. It gives me a little bit more color. And I really like the way that it looks. It doesn't really change the foundations. I'd say it gives you a little bit more of a glow, but not anything overboard. Like it's not, it's not like too much, at least for me, I do have a little bit more dry skin. So do you want to say that? But yeah, this was one that just kind of like sat around for a while. And I was like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with this product. And now I reach for it. I reach for it quite a bit. So some of you might know that I was not into cream products for a very long time. Cream and liquid products, bronzers, blushes, highlights, they were just not my thing. I have, I have fully switched over. Uh, I am now a big fan, big fan of cream products. And when I was thinking about doing this video and I was looking over my makeup collection, one item that I kept coming back to was this blush from Tower 28. Within the past like, I want to say like two weeks or so like it had it's been fairly recently but i keep reaching for this one and so that's kind of you know a thing a thing in general i used to really not enjoy cream products you know cream blushes not, just they were not my thing now i definitely am i have a lot in my collection i just purchased uh what did i purchase from sephora and m cosmetics last night so you will see a haul coming up on my channel there's a lot there's there's cream products in there there is 
But when I was thinking about, you know, is there a specific product that I could pull in here? I was like this tower 28 blush because like I said, it's been within like the last two weeks here I just keep reaching for it. I have it on my cheeks today I think that's really beautiful. The shade that I have is in magic hour This is one where I first tried it quite some time ago These are not like new new products by any means and I remember that I was like, oh, yeah, I like it but I, I, you know, I'm never gonna love this product. It's never gonna be a favorite of mine. I'm never gonna like wear it super consistently. And now I'm like, hmm, that Tower 28 blush. I just keep reaching for it. I don't know. I've been really enjoying it the past few weeks here. It just kind of always sits on my bathroom vanity. But cream blushes in general, that definitely was a switch for me. And then also on the flip side, bronzers. And when it came to bronzers, especially liquid bronzers, those really freaked me out. Now I do enjoy the Charlotte Tilbury uh, contour wand. That was one that when I first started trying it, I was like, I just enjoy this product. I think it's so good. It's so easy to work with. I was definitely very nervous though to try it out because I thought a liquid bronzer, like I'm, or a liquid contour, like I'm not gonna know how to use it. So that is, that is one that I always got on with. But other than that, like I don't know, liquid products. I mean, who remembers the NARS liquid blush? Like one of the most terrifying experiences of my life, okay? Uh, but <laughs> slightly dramatic. <laughs> but especially liquid bronzers, I just thought like this could be a gigantic mess. And now I'm definitely not as afraid of them. Um, I recently purchased the Iconic London, uh, their liquid bronzer, the sheer liquid bronze, which I think is great. But also this one here from Soul Body. This is the bronzer that I have on today. This is their face and body bronzer. Uh, I have the shade light. I can't stop wearing this one either. Uh, I just, I think it's so beautiful. It's so easy to use. I just put some on the back of my hand and then I pick it up with a damp sponge and I kind of really, I have a, um, a tutorial on my Instagram so I can link it in the description box. I'll link all, any of the products that I'm mentioning, I will link them too. But I'll go ahead and link that if you wanna see how I apply it because I just kind of dot it all around my hand and then apply it to my face. But it's beautiful, it's so natural, it's so easy to use. It's one of those that I don't feel afraid to like go overboard with but definitely if you haven't checked out that one from soul body I would recommend I also really like their uh, bronzer balm the one that is um, in the you know why am I blanking on all my words today okay Rizzo just got traded to the Yankees okay this is why I'm, I'm a little bit flustered right now I was literally just sitting down and my friend Shannon texted me in all caps Sam I was like what <laughs> and she just writes Rizzo. I was like, no, because we've known, we've known a trade might be coming. So if I'm upset, it's because of sports. Okay. Because of freaking sports. <laughs> but yes, also their bronzer balm that comes in the like pot form. That one's really good too. Okay. Another one. And then this was kind of like in general too, but pot concealers. I was not a fan not a fan of pot concealers. It wasn't like I tried a ton of them, but the ones that I did try, I was like, I'm just not into this. I much prefer just my regular like liquid concealer with a doe foot or something along those lines. Like that was just my favorite way to apply concealer. But then along came the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. And this is a holy grail. Just, I use this every single day. What I realized with pot concealers is that they usually have a little bit more of like a thicker, consistency but I've also like my poor concealer but I've also realized they are really good at covering acne uh, scarring hyperpigmentation redness on the skin and I really did not start battling hormonal acne until probably like what was it like March 2019 summer 2019 somewhere in there that is when my battle with hormonal acne really started and that's when I was like, oh my gosh, like I need, like I need to switch my makeup routine. I need to find products to help like what's going on here with my skin. And so when NARS came out with this and I heard people start to say that it is really good for that, I was all about it. And like I said, it is, it's, I use it every single day. Like this is not something that you will catch me without. I have the shade Creme Brulee, which is light 2.5. Um, yeah, definitely changed my mind on pot concealers. <laughs> Another product specifically that I didn't really love when it first came out and it, it wasn't so much that I didn't love the product. I just didn't like how to apply the product. Okay. This is from elf and this is their poreless putty primer. So this is another one that when it first came out, I was so against using anything like having to do with my fingers. And I, I can't remember if this one came with like a little spatula or not, or if I'm thinking of the Tatcha silk canvas, like I'm pretty sure that one came with a little spatula, but I was like, Oh, I just, I have to put my fingers in it and then, and then like, mm, I don't 
want to do that. But like I said, I, I have gotten better with it, even though when it comes to something like a primer, it's not always the best to like keep putting your fingers in it and little spatulas typically do work, especially if you are someone who does struggle with acne. Like even the uh, NARS concealer, I try not to just put my brush in here, I catch myself doing it sometimes still, but I try to take my finger and scoop a little out, put it on my hand, and then apply it that way. Just so you're not touching a breakout, then putting that, you know, contaminated brush into a product. Okay, we probably all know that, but just wanted to say that. But this is, an, this is a product, though, that it does do a really good job at filling in your pores. And I definitely do have larger pores, you know, especially in this area and, you know, sometimes on my forehead. Uh, and I'm someone who I enjoy filming my... You know, Instagram, I do a lot of videos on Instagram of trying out new makeup and I film without a filter <laughs> so everyone can see what the makeup's doing and see how it applies. And there's definitely times where I feel self-conscious because I do have larger pores. So I found myself, you know, constantly reaching and reaching more and more for the uh, e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer because I feel like it just helps kind of fill everything in, just makes things look a little bit smoother. So when I'm really up close in the camera, I don't feel quite as self-conscious with this primer from e.l.f. So yeah, this is another one that was just kind of sitting around in my collection for a while, but now I reach for it quite often. Oh man, was I not a fan of green eyeshadow for such a long time. And I would say it, and you know, I've never really been a very colorful eyeshadow wearer. I've typically, I mean, I've been into neutrals and bronzy moments and brown smoky eyes. That's what I've just been into for years before I started YouTube, when I got on YouTube. But you know, every once in a while I would like to mix it up, but usually I would go for like purples or um, even like oranges or reds. I think they look really great with green, with, uh, green eyes. But in the last like, I don't know, year, year and a half or so, green eyeshadow has started to steal my heart. I was wearing a look the other day, it was in my last Will I Bite video, and I was wearing one of these new ice cream palettes from ColourPop, and this is in Waffle Cone. Such a beautiful quad. I When I was looking through all of the ones that they sent in PR, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I also have the e.l.f. mint palette out because I wear this quite a bit too um, from their mint collection. It's so beautiful. I was doing a PR unboxing last night on my Instagram stories, which I feel like my Instagram stories have been pretty good these days. So if you don't follow me yet on Instagram, again, March Beauty Word. My stories, I feel like, have been a lot of fun. Um, a lot of areas in the stories too, of course. But I got a PR package from Juvia's Place and the first palette that I opened was, was it the Army palette with the greens in it? And I said like, how can I handle myself? Like those are what my like my eyes go to quite a bit these days. Uh, but yeah, green eyeshadow, never, I never really thought that I would be here. Not gonna lie. And then also when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, a brand in general that when I first started trying the palettes, I was like, this is not going to be a brand for me. It's a more expensive brand. Like I just, I don't think I'm ever going to get, get on with this brand, especially the eyeshadows. <laughs> It is Natasha Denona. So when I first started trying Natasha Denona, I tried the mini uh, mini Lilo palette and it's purple and it irritated my eyes. Then I bought the mini sunset or this might've been gifted to me. I think I bought this. No, I, I've had it for a while. I've had it for a while. But so I got the mini sunset and I was like, I don't know, I don't really love it. And then I got gifted the gold palette, which this palette is $129 and people have raved over it. And I was like, I like it, but I like I don't know if it's still like the 129 and I was like I just I don't think Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes are going to be for me and then I don't know what happened But I went on to love Natasha Denona palettes. These are just some of them I actually did a video recently ranking all of my Natasha Denona palettes in my collection so if you want to see that video, I can put it up in the cards because I go into more detail I mean her mini nude was what like really set me off. I hit pan in that second shade there and I, I, from there like her minis i absolutely love but the midi sizes i love too the glam the bronze the love palette i bought the biba palette it was just so interesting to me that when i first started trying her eyeshadows i was just like mm -mm. Mm -mm. and now it's truly one of my favorite eyeshadow palette brands and whenever she's coming out with a new one like i'm always going to give it a double take i might not always buy it because it is more expensive but i'm always going to give it a double take and then finally, I have one more palette preference that has changed, and that is having cream shadows in an eyeshadow palette. And I know that might sound kind of random, but I used to be 
so like I just didn't understand it I was like why would that be a thing I remember purchasing the Huda Beauty was it the Naughty palette and it had that cream shadow in there and I was like this is so dumb and I put tape over it which there wasn't like a protector over it which there definitely should have been but I just put tape over it and I was like I'm never gonna use that shadow like I did what like why did I even bother to put tape over it I was just never going to use it but I recently purchased <laughs> This is Patrick Ta palette, the Major Dimension eyeshadow palette, and inside there are two cream shadows. It does have the protector here, so it has the little plastic flap to protect it from the other shadows, but I go into these cream shadows all of the time. And it's kind of one in general too, not even just specifically cream shadows in a palette, but the, the cream shadows, uh, like liquid, um, what am I trying to say, just like liquid shadows in general, I've liked them and I've had them in my collection, but again, I was always so much more into my palettes, not so much into the cream and liquids, even for my eyes. So just kind of in general, that definitely changed for me. But every single time I've used this palette, I have always gone into those cream shadows. So it's definitely not something that bothers me anymore. And even like I said, with the ColourPop Super Shocks, uh, I've recently pulled out my Sigma Eye Base in Bubbly that I've been using so much. I like my, my preferences have definitely changed over that to that too and once again I think it's kind of one of those like quick and easy out the door types of looks that's just what I'm attracted to at the moment and I don't see it ending anytime soon like it's always fun to switch it up like I really liked my green look I really liked trying something new with the liner and I haven't worn la I I have not worn false lashes since getting to Vegas so it's probably been because I've been here for three months it's probably been like four, at least four if not even five months since I've worn false lashes I just did them on the corner you know to not intimidate me too much but there's been a lot that has changed there's been a lot that has changed but you know it's such a fun thing obviously in life not not to get too deep here but in life we're always going to change it's something that's very confusing to me when I see people say you've changed and they mean it in a negative manner of course there can be things that we do in life that you know aren't so good obviously disclaimers and all of that stuff that we have to say but for the most part, yeah, we change, we grow, we evolve. Our, our interests, you know, become different. And as we go through life, there's just always gonna be those changes. And I think that's what makes life interesting and unique and you never know what's going to happen next. And with something like makeup, it's such not a deep thing. It's, it's so casual and, you know, it's just supposed to be fun. But I, I find it interesting to see how, how it changes throughout the years and how the trends change and all that kind of stuff. So like I said, I've seen this requested quite a bit, so I really wanted to do it. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the makeup I used to hate that now I love. Again, I'll link anything down below, but definitely let me know your thoughts and let me know what did you used to hate even just a couple years ago, a couple months ago that you now love. I, of course, would love to know. And as always, if you enjoyed this one, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go, and I'll see you in my next video.